This is the complete guide of literally every hidden feature and some cool tips and tricks you could do with your brand new Series 8 Apple Watch. Let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with watch bases. With watch bases, if you actually have a long library like I do, if you long press, you can actually reorganize your watch bases just like so. And the swipe up will allow you to quickly delete them if you have so many. And by hitting the up arrow icon, this gives you the freedom to actually share your current watch face with another user. And you can actually go into the little details and include complications, which will actually send them the, to download the correct app to download some third party complications you may have on your watch face. It will automatically walk them through everything. Now, whenever you tap the home button, you have either the grid view or the list view. If you like to switch between both views, just simply just long press and you have the freedom to select between those diff two different modes. And on the very bottom, you quickly edit your app so you can reorganize it to your own personal preference, delete the ones you don't like. And in the list view, you can actually slide to have quicker access to the delete function. Oh, personal preference. Now in the control center, you're always able to have access to it so long as you long press on the bottom, this will pop up and near your control center. And if you long press on Wi-Fi, this gives you the freedom to quickly select a different Wi-Fi network. The pin iPhone icon, if you actually long press, this will actually toggle the flash, not just the sound. And the battery life percentage will allow you to quickly toggle low power mode. And to reverse back, you just simply just go back and redo the low power mode, and there you go. This is the only way you can actually get up to close to 30 hours of under a single charge from your Apple Watch. Just it will actually slow certain things down, like the heart rate sensor is not going to read as much. And some new notifications will, may come in minutes later than the exact second once you received it. Then a flashlight icon, if you actually allow it to do its thing, it's going to illuminate super bright. But in addition to that, you can also slide between the different modes that it also has. Silent mode, this is how you quickly silent your device. Or if you receive an incoming call or a text message, by simply just covering your device with your paw, it will actually put your device in silent mode automatically. Theater mode, with theater mode enabled, it will actually turn off your always on display. And if you use the digital crown, you gotta take a quick peek without fully illuminating your display and interrupting others around. Right below that is your water lock mode. Just long press and it will actually eject any liquid that was inside the speakers with this cool neat new animation. Airplay mode. Just disable Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You can customize it more in the settings, which I'll go more in a little bit. AirDrop allows you to quickly connect to any other Bluetooth device. Specifically, AirPods will immediately uh, connect to your Apple Watch, but if you go down, you can actually connect either a third-party headphone, so long as it supports Bluetooth, or an external speaker. Do Not Disturb mode. This will actually mirror all your Do Not Disturb modes that you have on your iPhone on the Apple Watch. School time mode will basically just turn your Apple Watch into a clock, eliminating any distractions or anything. You just have access to the important things like the time and date, as well as this neat watch face. Hearing aid. If you have headphones connected, you will actually be able to monitor the decibel levels of the audio that you're listening to. And walkie-talkie mode. When walkie-talkie mode is enabled, if you actually send somebody an invite or they're a part of your list, of friends that can get a hold of you. With this mode enabled, not only will the icon be indicated right here on the top portion, which you can tap and see what these other icons are, but with this mode enabled, somebody can easily always just walkie-talkie you, no matter what you're doing, so long as it's enabled. And to turn it off, just simply just reverse the process. These eight icons allow you to quickly adjust the text size of your Apple Watch, all personal preference. I like to leave it default. The bell icon, if you have any headphones connected to your Apple Watch or your iPhone, by having this bell icon enabled, Siri will just verbally read out loud your messages. So you don't have to look at your watch. And if you tap edit, you could delete some of these or rebrand them to your own personal preference. Notifications can also be accessed no matter what app you're using by simply just long pressing on the top. And if you scroll all the way up, this gives you the freedom to clear all notifications. Now watch faces with hidden features. Both Mickey Mouse or the Mini Mouse watch face, if you actually use two fingers and you can tap anywhere on the display, so long as your device is not on silent, the character will actually read out loud the time in their character's voice. Now if you switch to a non-Disney character watch face, if you do the same thing, Siri will actually read out loud the time. If you put your device on silent, it may actually vibrate to actually tell you the time. If you'd like to go ahead and enable this, all you gotta do is just go into settings, 
go into clock and scroll down where it says speak time enable this and select always speak or you could select control with silent mode and then on the very bottom where it says tactic time digital this is where you actually select moist code if you like or digital or terse so now if you go back and have your device on silent mode and you use two fingers one more time and tap anywhere on the screen your apple watch will use haptic feedback to actually tell you the time then i almost left out something important to switch between different watch faces quickly you can technically swipe from the bottom and just like switch between the watch faces just like so it's not really consistent which is why i don't recommend this tip but it is a feature but i'd much rather just do that and then if your device is not on silent and you're receiving an incoming notification if you actually cover your apple watch and keep holding it for a couple seconds it will quickly manually put your device in silent mode if your device is not doing this all you got to do is just go into settings go into sound and heptics scroll all the way down to where you see cover to mute enable this and now it should work then ask for incoming calls if you cover it for just a second it was a sound of the call but the caller will still ring and if you do that again but long hold it will actually end that call and denied then if you pick up a call from your apple watch you gradually transfer it to your iphone by just sim simply picking up your iphone and just transfer a call like so and you can do the same thing by versa now if you experience any technical difficulty with your apple watch like an app is acting funny by simply just holding down the power button until you get to this page and then tap and hold the digital crown this will actually force close that app and the next time we launch it it will reboot now both the digital crown and the power button can do two different things a double tap on the digital crown will take you back to the previously open app and if you tap on the power button this will actually open up app switcher which you can control and customize from either re recently open apps or favorites and to do this it's quicker if you just launch the main app on your iphone of uh, your apple watch and where it says docs select favorites and here you can actually tap edit and select your favorite apps you want to actually put so next time when you tap the power button it will actually be your favorite apps so this is a clever way you can bookmark some of these i personally prefer to leave it on recent now medical id if you actually long press on the apple watch you have access to your medical id right here which you go ahead and slide and enabled if you don't see the medical id what you have to do is set this up to do this go on your iphone launch the health app click on your profile and where it says medical id click on here enter the important detail you need but as soon as you're done go all the way to the very bottom and where it says show when on show when locked make sure this is enabled it will show your medical id on both your iphone and apple watch on your iphone just long press volume up and power button and you'll get this screen on the apple watch long press on the power button and you have the slider capability for your medical id right here now backtrack is a new feature for watchOS 9 which the series 8 also received if you long press on the power button one more time and slide on compass here's where you can actually go in and start the backtracking by simply tapping the foot, little foot icon right here it'll actually begin and then once you're done and you want to go back to your campground or something like that click on retrace steps and just follow the steps and it should take you back to your grid and you could use the digital crown to zoom in or zoom all the way out so you have a better overview of the map in addition to that you can also set markers right here and this upper icon right here on the left top portion this will give you additional information like latitude and altitude and such it's able to do all this due to the built-in gps that comes standard on all modern day apple watches and then if you put your apple watch on the charging stand this little thunderbolt icon if you tap on here it will actually show you the exact percentage of the apple watch and then just in case you don't have the nightstand mode enabled where it will actually display the time in this green format all you have to do is just go into the settings go into general and look for nightstand mode enable this and now you're good to go now if you're replying to a text message with iMessage on the apple watch you can still technically reply with scribbles but if you tap the up arrow icon you can actually select keyboard which actually does support the swift function where you actually just quickly swish swivel through and create text and you can use the digital crown to go back to move the marker or you can tap on the word and use the digital crown to substitute with a different word you may be thinking of course you have access to your emojis and such you can also use dictation if you want to verbally reply to a text you can also totally do so 
And then on a conversation, of course, you can scroll all the way down to have access to quick replies. But when you tap the app icon, it gives me emojis, GIFs, voice memos to reply, heart animation, or pay with Apple Cash if you owe the person money. And if you tap on this heart icon, you can either scribble. If you long press on the color wheel, you can actually select a custom color and it'll actually save. And so long as you had done. But in addition to that, if you long hold or use two fingers, you can do like a heart animation, which actually will utilize the heart rate sensor of your Apple Watch. A long press will create this fireball effect. And then if you use two fingers one more time, again, it uses the heart rate sensor to match your heart rate. But if you move down, you, you could actually break like the heart SEC right here in this animation. So you have a bunch of freedom to be get creative. And then, but of course, if you long hold on the text, you have these quick replies as well. And then still, if you scroll all the way down, you have access to quick replies for the suggestions, as well as send your exact location and the person contact information in the details. Yeah, if you wish to add more to these suggested or quick replies, you gotta take out your phone and go launch the official Apple Watch app and go into messages and scroll down to where you see the default replies and here is where you can actually go in and add more. But the Apple Watch actually has handoff mode enabled where if you actually bring your iPhone close to you and you launch App Switcher, you'll see right here on the very bottom, you can actually quickly take off where you last left off on your Apple Watch so he'll resume the message that you're working on. If you need medication reminders, you can always set up right here with the medication app. And then as for the camera tricks, if you actually launch the camera app on the Apple Watch, this will actually be the viewfinder of your iPhone because it'll actually show you literally everything you can see on your iPhone. And if you have like the correct strap, you can actually strap it on the back portion of your iPhone. This way you can utilize the best camera on the iPhone and still be able to see what you're seeing. So you can actually get everybody in the group photo and stuff. But if you actually play with here, uh, play with the camera app, you have a lot of additional controls you could control right here. Just the only thing is, you have to actually physically grab your iPhone if you want to switch between photo or video mode. Now when paying with Apple Pay, you just double tap the power button twice, it will bring up your card. And if you like to categorize, reorganize it, you can always long press on the card and then just move it and rearrange it like so. Now all Apple Watches have some unique safety feature, one of which is fall detection, but new for the Series 8 is the crash detection. If you want to go ahead and make sure you have these two features enabled, just go into your settings on the Apple Watch, go into Emergency SOS, and scroll down where you see Crash Detection, make sure this is enabled, and where it says Fall Detection, enable this. Now if you're over the age of 55, this will be automatically enabled by default, but if you're under, you have to manually enable this, and I personally prefer leaving it always on, even during my workouts. And pro tip, if you're concerned about accidentally toggling fall detection like a false alarm and stuff don't be i it's really hard to really toggle this i only toggle this maybe one to three times per year but even if it's falsely toggled it's very noticeable and really easy to disable as there is like a 10 second timer or five second timer where you can actually cancel it in case it was a fall false alarm but to the most part this thing has been known to be able to save lives so if you experience any medical issues or anything like that for the best peace of mind, I recommend having both of these enabled as all it will do is just get a hold of emergency dispatchers and get a hold of your emergency contacts by sending them your exact pin location during the incident so you can actually get medical treatment in case something happened. So don't be afraid of this. It's actually a really good feature. I highly recommend. Another great feature I recommend leaving enabled still in the uh, SOS section is the side button for SOS. This is super useful to use if you have to stealthily get a hold of emergency dispatchers. Instead of sliding the screen for SOS called, if you keep holding the power button, it will actually start a 5 second timer. Just, it will play a loud sound, so heads up. And if you actually turn off the Apple Watch entirely, and you tap the digital crown, it will still display the clock. Now still in the settings, in general, if you scroll down to screenshots, this is where you can actually go ahead and enable the screenshots if it just becomes annoying and you send a bunch of screenshots on that to them whenever you toggle the power and digital crown at the same time. Now if you feel yourself constantly like bumping into walls with your Apple Watch and you think you don't want to damage your digital crown right here, 
You can actually switch the orientation of the Apple Watch so the digital crown will be on the opposite side. To do this, back in general, in orientation, this is where you actually can switch your Apple Watch. And then once you do this, of course you need to switch the band accordingly. Now when activating Siri on the Apple Watch, there's three ways to do so. You can either hold down the digital crown, say verbally just say, hey, S-I-R-I, -I. don't want to set off your device, so I'm just going to say, hey, s'mores. Or just raise your wrist up and just begin talking and Siri will automatically start listening. To make sure you have these features enabled, just go back in your settings and go into the Siri section. And here's where you can actually enable those other Siri features, as well as change the voice and such. But a personal powerful tool that Siri is capable of doing is Siri can actually launch certain websites. If you say google.com, you have the full freedom right here to actually browse through Google, click on URLs, and go on social media platforms this way as well. And then if you ever find yourself on the very bottom of an app, if you tap the up portion screen, it will automatically take you all the way up. It's definitely much faster than having to scroll all the way up to a very long app. Now in the sound and heptics, there's a couple features you could actually enable. If you go into headphone safety, if you like to actually reduce, like set a certain decibel level for your headphones, you can actually reduce sound right here, enable this, and then just use the digital crown and you should be able to select the different decibel levels that you have. So 75 to 100 even shows you examples down here. So if you're trying to preserve your hearing as much as possible, I do recommend enabling this feature. But if we go back and you go to Heptic Alerts, if you feel like the Heptic motor isn't as strong for you, you missed a couple of notifications when your device is on silent, you can always select Primant, which is a much more violent vibration effect. So that way, you definitely will not miss a notification. Now, if we go back and go back into Clocks, you could also offset your the time on your Apple Watch from your iPhone. So if you like to add a five minutes in advance notice to always be early in your meetings and stuff, you could totally do so without having to change the time on your iPhone. But if you go down to chimes, by enabling chimes, you have the freedom to select either bells or birds. So if your device is not on mute, they'll actually play like the sounds of birds, the sounds of bells on the hour, almost like a grandpa clock. And if you have your device on mute, it'll also send you a vibration feedback, letting you know that a new hour has gone by. Think of this like a grandfather clock. I personally love using this due to the fact that it allows me to no longer like lose track of time. I know when it's the next hour. So I'm like, I'm not like, oh crap, it's eight o'clock, three hours has gone by. This basically helps me prevent that. Now, if you scroll down where it says monograph, this actually allows you to actually create a custom message for some supported watch faces. Only five characters are supported. And this is how it looks like whenever you use a selected watch face. I have a whole dedicated video right here, which you go ahead and watch, where I go through the complete list of apps, uh, watch faces actually support the monograph. Now if we go back, a feature that's disabled by default is the hand watching timer. I personally prefer having this on. Based off the movement and the sound, the Apple Watch is able to utilize its internal sensors and microphone to identify if you're watching your hands. And while you're watching your hands, it will automatically start a 20 second timer, which is the recommended amount that's needed to really fully clean up your hands and kill that nasty bacteria. The Apple Watch will actually give you a heptic feedback, play sound, give you a cool animation, letting you know you have completed 20 seconds. And if you come short, it will actually give you a notification asking you why didn't you complete it type of thing. So if you want to stay clean and want to start a 20 second timer without having to sing a song or anything like that, this is the feature I prefer having enabled. Now, an app that I'm sure many people could agree is the Mindfulness app. It can be useful, but most people, like myself, I find this annoying. If you like to turn it off, just disable it right here. Just turn all this off. But if you like to customize it to your own personal preference, you have the freedom to adjust certain things, like when you want it to start during the day and when you want it to end. So this is where you have to go in and disable that. Now, another safety feature can be found in the noise section. Here, if you have the uh, environmental sound measurement enabled, and you select the notification threshold, mine is 90 decibels for 30 minutes. If you work in a place that you're exposed to loud noises and you want to preserve your ears as much as possible, select one of these decibels. And if you're exposed to it for that duration, the Apple Watch will send you a notification letting you know that, uh, hey, this is the limit that you selected that's known to cause hearing problems if you continue. I highly recommend going into a quiet place and allow your ears to recover. 
That's what this safety feature allows you to do, and it's located in the noise app. Now, moving back, I personally don't use the sleep app tracking, but if you like to, this is where you actually go ahead and enable this. And a feature that I recommend being aware of is the charge reminder. Enable this because throughout the day, once the Apple Watch knows that you need more juice to complete your sleep tracking, it will actually send you a push notification ahead of time before your bedtime, allowing you to charge your device so it can actually make it through the night. So now when you're going to sleep with your Apple Watch for sleep tracking, it will actually, it, should, it will have more than enough juice to successfully track your sleep for that night. So that's what the recharge reminder allows you to do. Now, before we go any further, I like to backtrack and go back into the general. In the background, app refresh. Disable this if you're really trying to preserve battery as much as possible. Uh, this will basically just prevent apps from right in the background. But honestly, first-hand experience, this doesn't really do much. Probably just takes away like 1% or 2% battery life. So, if you're trying to get the maximum battery life for as much as possible, you can always disable this. But you're just saving 1% or 2%. Now, all Series 8 Apple Watches have the always on the display hardware, and this feature is indeed enabled by default. If you'd like to fine tweak it to your own personal preference, let's say, for example, you don't want your always on display to display your complications like your calorie burns, your steps, and stuff like that, personal information really, you could actually fine tweak it to your own personal preference by going into the display and brightness. If you scroll down, here's where you can actually turn off the always on display if you just don't want it to go on. You just want a black screen instead. But if you do want it, but you don't want to show complication data, you could go down here where it says wrist down. You could disable it right here, or you could disable the apps you don't want to see that information if you want to customize it even more. You could also do the similar thing to the notifications as well as apps. So this is where you can actually adjust that to your own personal preference. And if we go back one more time, if you scroll all the way down, if you'd like to increase the duration of the Apple Watch to 70 seconds from the previous 15 seconds, you can select that right there. And something that I nearly just forgot is if you launch the workout app and you select the workout, the timer can be bypassed if you just tap on it. And then, in addition to that, a double tap during the workout will create different segments. And if you'd like to change the workout without ending your workout calorie tracking, you can always switch to this page, tap the plus icon, and select the next workout. Then in addition to that, if you like to customize a workout to your own personal preference, you can tap the three dot icon and it will give you access to additional settings you could adjust to fine tweak certain workouts to your own personal preference. You have all that freedom right here. But then if you want your Apple Watch to be able to automatically start a workout if it notices a certain movement like the elliptical or you're running for a good minute or two, the Apple Watch can actually backtrack and credit you the time when you start it. So long as you have the automatic workout detection enabled, you can find this in the settings and then go down to the workout section. Go ahead and enable it, start workout reminder. And you could do the same thing once you're done working out. The Apple Watch will notify you in case you're done. You can enable the press to pause the gym equipment. But my personal favorite is the auto pause. Was this enabled? It will automatically just stop tracking if you're resting. And we'll resume back as soon as you begin working out once more time. Whenever you do an ECG, keep in mind, whenever you're done, if you launch the health app, you could actually export the ECG data logs as a PDF. So you could actually share it to your profession, your doctor, and stuff like that. And when doing your heart rate, it's actually capable to read your heart rate faster if you actually put your finger on the digital crown like an ECG. It'll instantly start reading. And then, real quick, if you have AirPods and you're, they're connected to your iPhone or your Apple Watch, you can actually toggle the different modes right here if you're using the AirPod Pro to have transparency mode or active noise cancellation. Now, if whatever said reason you misplaced your Apple Watch, you can always use the Find My App. And if you toggle it this way, it will actually utilize the heart rate sensor so you can actually help locate it faster, especially in the dark room. Now, your Apple Watch actually has a lot of storage. It has 32 gigabytes of available storage, to be honest. And if you like to actually like install podcasts, your playlist, and etc. on the Apple Watch internal storage, to really utilize it, so you don't have to carry around your phone or have Wi-Fi connection or anything like that. Launch the main app on your Apple Watch on your iPhone and scroll down to music. And here is where you can actually manually select the type of music, the podcast, and all that stuff that you want to actually have installed on the internal hardware of your Apple Watch. And in terms for podcasts, you could do the exact same thing. 
Now, if you have the passcode enabled on your Apple Watch, you know it somewhat can become annoying or, or repetitive every time you put on your Apple Watch, you have to manually import the password. If you like to allow it so that your iPhone will bypass this via Face ID as soon as you unlock your phone, you could totally do so. Just go into the settings section on your Apple Watch on your iPhone and go into passcode, enter the passcode, and just enable unlock with iPhone. Enter the password one more time to confirm. And now, when you unlock your iPhone, it will automatically unlock your Apple Watch while you're wearing it. And then if you want your Apple Watch to unlock your iPhone, you can do that as well. Just launch the settings section on your main device on your iPhone and go into face of the end passcode, enter the password to get it in, and scroll down to where you find unlock with Apple Watch. Search for the one you're trying to enable, enable it, enter the passcode, and there you go. And you're good to go. And then it doesn't end there. If you have a Mac OS computer, if you actually go into the system settings on that device and go in touch ID and password. If you scroll down, you can find an Apple Watch section. Enable the Apple Watch. You want this freedom to actually be able to do this. So now whenever you so now whenever you turn on your MacBook, so long as your Apple Watch is nearby and it's unlocked, it will automatically unlock your MacBook computer. Aside from that, there you go. That is the complete guide to literally every little hidden feature and some tips and tricks that I developed that I shared with you guys. So you could actually get the most out of this device. I know this was a longer video, but this is literally the complete guide. So there's no need to watch any other video. I got your back in this one. If you enjoyed, leave this video a like, subscribe. And if you like to watch more, curious what accessories I have, watch this video over here where I go through my favorite accessories I have on my Apple Watch. And then that video over there, this is a video YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thank you a lot for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.